millions of dollars going straight to ICE and CBP um, with zero restrictions that it actually had to be used to do anything for the kids in detention to speed up processing or do anything like that. So um, I think people are pretty pissed. I would imagine that the more liberal and progressive senators were afraid that they would be seen as like not supporting children's, but the reality is that they kowtowed and they did not um, do anything. And I think Schumer was one of the people who really like led the charge on like just letting it pass with no strings attached. Well, and Pelosi, both of them. And Pelosi then did it in the House and it passed in the House and I think Trump has already signed it or is going to sign it soon. Um, so there's a bunch of money. Uh, what about Peter Welch? Because as I understand it, a couple things, Pelosi did what she did. She could yeah. have brought up the House version. She chose to bring up the Senate version. But also Peter, and I've known him for a million years, but he's one of the assistant whips down there. Uh -huh. So I'm really curious, you know, what is Peter's position on this? Because from the negative point of view, it seems like he did nothing but carry water for Pelosi to yeah. get the votes whipped into shape to support yeah, the Senate bill. There's a, a list you can go see and see how they voted, and I didn't remember to look up what he voted. But this is one of a national number of protests that are happening this week, particularly today, yep. um, told, called by Move On and United We Dream and I think a few other groups. And so there's one that happened earlier today in Montpelier. There's one that happened earlier today in Burlington. Yep. And the Burlington folks visited um, everybody's office. Yep. So like yep. uh, Sanders, they visited Leahy's office, they visited um, Welch. But I have a letter I was going to read to you, see if you're interested in signing. Basically, one of the things that they asked us all to do is to drop off a letter with their three demands. I added a fourth. Let me read, read the letter to you, and if you agree, then we'll sign it. So, dear Senator Leahy, we are deeply disappointed that you voted in favor of McConnell's bill to give more money to ICE and CBP. With no requirements for them to spend that money on improving conditions or speeding up releases, you effectively rewarded the agencies responsible for committing atrocities and abuses against children and families. Our demands are simple. And these, the first three demands are given to us from Move On and uh, United We Dream. So close the camps and reunite families. We should not be detaining children or separating families. The conditions of many of these detention centers are worthy for prosecution for crimes against humanity, as is the policy, even if in its current pared down form of separating families. There's ample research showing children suffer irre irreversible harm from being in detention and from being separated from families, regardless of the conditions. Do not, two, do not spend one dollar on family separation, detention, or deportation. When the September budget is negotiated, we need you to prioritize defunding ICE and CBP. Our tax dollars should not be supporting the cruelty and abuses of these agencies. And three, visit a detention center unannounced on your July 4th recess and demand regular inspections. In the words of your colleague, Senator Carol Alvarado, as the quote, as these facilities are in our state, the conditions under which they operate is a reflection of our values and commitment to the humane treat treatment of all within our borders. The Franklin County Jail in St. Albans and the Vermont Department of Corrections in Waterbury are both being used for holding immigrants. Here is a guide for members of Congress, and there's like a little thing where they can, there's actually a guide for how Congress members can do these unannounced visits and what they should ask for and things like that. So put a link in there. Um, and then four, this is the one that I added, close the law enforcement support se center. You helped develop and expand ICE's National Nerve Center in Williston. You have continued to defend the existence of the center, which, among other things, helps identify undocumented immigrants for ICE and leads to more deportations. We are appalled that Vermont is supporting and that you are defending ICE's deportation efforts. This must stop immediately. We believe this is a watershed moment where we are all called to action. History will judge us harshly if we stand by and allow these atrocities to continue. As our elected official, we call on you to uphold our most basic human values and do everything in your power to intervene, interrupt, and end these inhuman actions against children and families. We will be your partner in this effort or we will hold you to account for your actions. Sincerely. Is it okay? Their effort. So every, every single... Here? Um, correctional facility in the state of Vermont gets money from us. And for Every okay. single one, and a lot. So, that's so it shores up their budgets. Yeah. They don't necessarily house anyone. I haven't seen any of them except the one up in Newport and Swanton house anyone yet. But, but they all get money from it. Every single year they get money from ICE. So it's a budgetary thing for this guy. Yeah. So here's the deal. 
So we will have a letter we wanted to read. We have not gotten around to signing it, but we'll sign it before you leave so that you can take it back with you. Senator Leahy, okay. give you a chance to um, address the first thing, one of the first reasons why we're here. Um, is the fact that he voted for a bill that has no restrictions. And we would like to hear, did he try to put restrictions? Where does he stand on that, and how does he justify himself? Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity. Let me tell you what's not in the bill and what is in the bill, and have a handout that identifies that. No funding for the wall, no funding for ICE detention beds. Prohibits any beds. Prohibits transfer of any DHS funding in this bill to any other purpose. Prohibits information obtained from potential sponsors of unoccupied, unaccompanied children from being used for immigration enforcement. Ensures congressional oversight to Office of Refugee Resettlement facilities within 48 hours notice. Temporary facilities in operation for more than six months must meet new minimum standards, and all new CBP processing facilities must meet national standards of transport, escort, detention, and search. Requires monthly reporting on children being separated from their families. Those are the things that are pushing back the Trump administration. Let me tell you what is in the bill. $979 million in new funding for migrant care, processing facilities, food, medical services, and safe transportation. $109 million to ensure the safety and well-being of children through post-release, wraparound services, legal services, and case management. 30 new immigration judge, judge teams to address immigration backlog, 20 million in funding to expand alternatives to detention programs by an estimated 13,500 people, 30 million dollars for grants for nonprofits who care for migrant families released from CBP custody, 10 million for the legal orientation program to educate migrants about their rights and the legal process at the border, and 9 million to speed up placement of un unaccompanied children with sponsors and manager cases. So that is what is in the bill. Now, Senator Leahy voted for the House passed bill in the Senate. It didn't have enough votes to pass. It needed 60, it got 55. He worked very hard, as he has on immigration issues for a long time, with Senator Shelby, to push back at the Trump administration what they wanted for the wall and additional detention beds. And he felt that it's really important because they would, OR would have run out of money at the end of this month. The fact that you get medical care, that you get beds, that you put the stuff in place to help fix a broken system is why he supported that bill. He wasn't just going to walk away and not do anything. It's not a perfect bill. It's deplorable the way they're being treated. He has been to a processing center down in Texas to see what's going on firsthand. <coughs> He's trying to do what he can as a U.S. Senator to make life better. And what you want? You had a question yeah, first. Yeah, I wondered how soon those um, those things that you were mentioning can be put into place. I well, mean, they, it's immediate. When the president comes back and signs the bill, then the process goes into effect. I mean, it has to have the president's signature. We're assuming that he will support that bill. And I'd like to point out too, in 2013, as chair of Senate Judiciary, Senator Leahy shepherded through comprehensive immigration reform. It got 68 votes in the U.S. Senate. That rarely happens anymore. It got to the House and they refused to deal with it. It had all the things in it that we wanted to give people a legal path to citizenship, to help out DACA recipients. He's been at this for a long time. He's introduced legislation to get blue cards for agricultural workers, because you know, you can't just leave cows alone for six months out of the year. We need the ag workers here in Vermont to be able to do that job. He's tried to work against separating families. I mean, he's doing everything he can. We're in a democracy. It takes a majority vote to get things through. In some instances, 60 in the Senate. But he worked very hard to push back on what were Trump priorities in this bill. And there's a lot of good in this bill. Is it perfect? No. But he's doing the absolute best he can. He's made progress, and he'll continue to go back and do it. But it delivers aid when they needed. ORR was going to run out of money at the end of the June. He felt it more important that you get the medical care, the space that they need, the bedding for the kids need it and that's that's why he's I have a question. so um, aren't some of these things that are in this new bill things that are uh, were already in place or was are, aren't some of these things the criteria in any case well there's new criteria about having to come up the standards for health and safety around the facilities where yeah. the housing people suppose are new and directing the money in there and telling DHS you can't move the money 
The money we're appropriating goes to these purposes. Now, that doesn't mean DHS won't find money somewhere else to try to re relocate, but the money that the Senate and the House, by agreeing to it with the majority vote, appropriated is supposed to go for these issues. And, and what if point. they do violate it? They, then they're violating the law. And we'll, you know, well, there's a lot of violating the law going on <laughs> these days, so one wonders what Congress the writes is. the laws, we can only hope that they enact them. And, you know, they said they'll be, they'll be watching it. But again, you know, is the senator happy with what's going on down there? No. I mean, he's trying to direct funding there to try to make a difference immediately. And he felt it more important that the people who are waiting and the kids have beds to sleep and have the medical care they need. And getting immigration judges to reduce the backlog so people can actually process for illegal immigration in this country. That's the basic stuff we need to do, and that's what he's trying to do. So let's, I'm sorry, more to the point, though, what exactly... Uh, what are the options that the senator has or that the, uh, that the government has if they do violate this? Well, then we'll have to, whether it goes to court or Congress has to take steps to try to step in. Well, let's hope they don't go there. But, you know, their role is to legislate. Let's see how they execute. But they've cleared it in the law saying you are not to divert this money to other purposes, including the wall or additional detention beds. Yes. So I think that we can all agree, like, we're, we're glad Leahy has has championed immigrant rights at various moments in history. Well, I think, throughout his career, actually. Right. And, but we're at a different kind of a moment where the, the traditional tactics that I think Congress has used don't hold up anymore because the level of atrocity, the level of cruelty that we're seeing, particularly against children and families, which is just unconscionable, is, is, has reached and demands from us a new level of action. And so I'm curious about particularly the, the not spending any more money on ICE, on deportations, on family separations, like what he's going to do with the September, September budget coming up around trying to defund ICE, trying to defund CBP. There are other very important functions that ICE is assigned to do by their designation. And I'll just share a few of them with you because this comes up quite a bit. Okay, and the senator would much rather they focus on these than their, this administration, what he's had him fo they've had him focusing on. Financial crimes, money laundering, bulk cash smuggling. I'm just gonna stop you there. Why, so, that's the mission of ICE. No, I totally get that. I know that there are people, and there are people within ICE who <coughs> hate what the enforcement arm of ICE is doing, yeah. right? I, we've heard it all, we've heard those stories, but the reality is the more money they have, the, and when we see like the priorities are set by the administration, the priorities are not set by the people in ICE doing the things that we actually need them to do. So when so many resources are then being thrown specifically at enforcement, right now it feels like a very reasonable measure to say, like, we're just not going to give you the money and you're going to have to deal with some of that. And if you were to completely defund ICE, which isn't going to happen, the other issues that ICE has to focus on, intellectual property theft, cybercrime, human rights violations, human trafficking and smuggling, those are other assignments that's on their mission statement. This administration has kind of moved up the immigration documentation and stuff up to the top of the list. But those functions need to take place. It matters to trade, it matters to commerce, so to do away with ICE uh, and is so not something the Senate but will defund, agree to do. Defunding you, you assign ICE? those tasks? Well, they exactly. are assigned to ICE. The Senator would prefer and will do his best to make sure they focus on what they should be focusing on. Right, but I think the, it would be... The, the problem is, you know, that they're really intent on this whole crackdown on people that look different as a way of playing to the xenophobic base. This is an act by intentional members of this administration as a way of creating this white ethno state, a really hostile experience to the rest of the world, a big antagonistic relationship with the world that we need to cooperate with if we're going to solve our global problems. We can't just play mind games or little label games around ICE. ICE may have certain functions that are valid. What they're being used and, and, and uh, weaponized to do is, 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 is destructive, is criminal. Other things I itemized are incredibly important. We rather, and the Senate will focus his time on trying to make sure they focus on those missions. But I think at this point, for him to abolish ICE uh, would not be something that'd be in favor. He'd rather get them to focus on what their mission is. And, and get these tasks out of their mission statement. I mean, that's yeah. the bottom one about you know, immigration, like false documentation and stuff. There's stuff that they should track. But they've got many other things they need to focus on versus this. Unfortunately, we're in an environment where you have an administration that is having them focus on other things. Speaking. Oh, 
Believe me, I mean, we know the senator is not happy with what's going on, and he's doing the absolute best he can to try to change things. You know, Will we he do be have. visiting at a detention center? He visited recess? one in McAllen. Well, he already visited one in McAllen, Texas, a processing center, which is where they have, have the young people. So he's already been there. His staff's been down there as well. So he knows what's going on. He thinks it's deplorable, and he feels that by what he's done and the supplemental is starting to address those needs going forward. And now, immediately, because they needed the money, they'd run out. Um, and what, what specifically is he going to do about the current conditions? I know there's a bunch of money. We're not sure how it's going to spend. We're not sure how it's going to be delivered. Also, we've already seen a Trump lawyer argue that children don't need uh, beds or toothbrushes, right, to, to meet sanitary conditions. So like, how, what is he doing to make sure that there are inspections and, and there that is, those are being This is in law, addressed. and I'll give everybody a copy of this so you have it, what is actually in the legislation that passed to deal with those issues. I mean, he understands there should be humane treatment, you know, things like beds, toothbrushes, health, the fact that they actually get a legal attorney to interpret what they need to do to help, you know, that's the infrastructure, and they said this is how you'll spend the money. Now, Who's, Congress, is there a committee to make well, sure that well, money is spent? Congress appropriated the money. The appropriations bill, both in the Senate and the House, this is the Senate bill they passed. They have a, their job is to appropriate. Now, they will track it and see what happens. If the Trump administration decides to go astray, that's when Congress needs to step in. Now, for an example, you know, there was that Facebook thing, that CBP, they were saying some really outrageous things. Well, they, they called on the Inspector General to investigate what was going on. I mean, there are steps that we can take, but they've done their job, they passed the law, now let's see what happens to go there. But they identified, they said, you will not divert funding, and this is where the money will go, which I think is a huge step. So, so Congress can act on the Inspector General's report, which was saving. Yeah. Well, at least they have the Inspector General. But I'm saying, you know, he could have said, you know, I'll wait. He wasn't going to let the perfect be the enemy of the good. It was important to get care that uh, people trying to come into this country need, and that's what he did in this bill. He worked very hard to keep some of the more strident things that Trump has in there and come up a bill that will actually do some good. It's not over. we got a long ways to go. But that's where it stands right now. John, I'd request the Senator, when they, when they come back after the recess, uh, to consider uh, having the judiciary convene a hearing on the atrocious behavior, you know that Facebook page that the Border Patrol members have, uh, racist comments, uh, terrible comments about the, the, the father and the, and the daughter who died. And if uh, the chair of that committee, Lindsey Graham, doesn't agree to have a hearing, could the Democrats then convene uh, a public hearing of their own to investigate that uh, incident? I, I don't, maybe they could. I don't know fundamentally how that works out in Feinstein, Senator Feinstein's the ranking member on the judiciary, yeah. Senator Lays, the senior member. And I'll have that discussion with him this afternoon. I just want to make that request. Yeah, well, thank you. And maybe it can happen. No, I know there certainly is an interest in that. But I'll put bugging the I also think there's a lot of talk about wanting to hold accountable the folks who are actually running these facilities. And I think there's a, a chain of command, but that everybody in that chain is somewhere accountable for what's been happening. And we want to actually understand where those decisions are being made. The people who are refusing care to toddlers, like we want to see people held accountable for those actions to demonstrate that that is not how we do things in this country. What can, what can Leahy do to yeah, support that? Find, I'll, you know, I can look into that and see what actually is. And I do think as a result of what they've done with the appropriations, there'll be much more attention because they have to report on what's going on. They have to report on what's going on. Is the aid going there? And having like the visitation now, granted it's a 48 hour notice, but they can do the visitations to the sites and getting the attorneys on place, it'll just, overall, it should make a significant difference. But as to what particular steps we need to be taken to the accountability. Could you explain uh, to the best of your ability why the 48-hour uh, yeah. lead time? You know, I, I don't know. I know it'd be nice to be able to get there on the spot. I'd have to find out. Because I'm curious about the oversight that's mentioned in the bill as you read it and what that looks like. That seems, that seems like kind of a giveaway. I mean, it'd be nice to be able to just, I'm sure there are things they have to do with prep. And I can actually try to find out where they arrived at for 48 hours. It, it was 
it doesn't seem unreasonable that we should be able to examine what our own government is sanctioning. I mean, I can understand to some degree why they want a little bit of notice, whether it's a few hours. But I, again, I don't know enough about that particular component. Um, we have another question from the audience. Um, we have a question about version that came to the Senate was only able to get 55 yes votes. It needed six. Senator Lee was one of those 55 yes votes. But then when that failed, the Senate bill, and that's what we ended up with tonight. So it's, it's not perfect, but it's doing the best we can, and it is directing a lot of things that are needed for the people who are trying to cross the border and are being detained. Is he planning to go and visit facilities? He's already visited one. He'll probably yeah. make another trip, but he did visit one okay. down in uh, McAllen, Texas. Processing because I think presence is really important. Well, again, and he's been there, and his staff has been down there as well. The staff on appropriations have been down to see what's going on. So, uh, he has a deep understanding. You know, he's he's not happy with the way things are. He's trying to make them better, and he'll just keep flowing. It was the uh, I, I guess the. Uh, Number 45 just uh, refused to uh, print the census forms um, as part of this general strategy. Um, and I guess the House is suing now. Um, is there a way for the Senate to act in a way to, you know, or in committee to bring that up as a way of oversight and basically say, you know, holding the children beyond 72 hours is in contradiction of, of the, you know, U.S. law, rather, and international human rights standards, and then sue? As to the particulars of bringing something up to the Senate, because we don't have the majority, we don't set the schedule. Now, people like Senator Lay will keep bringing attention to the issue and doing what we can, but we, we don't schedule, schedule the committee hearings, we don't schedule the agenda. It's just the way it works in the Senate. The majority party dictates what gets to the floor and what does I, I, I completely sympathize. He's there also, this is an extraordinary moment oh. of crisis on the planet mm. entirely on a bunch of levels driven by this administration as a way of being a broken record and basically making sure that everything starts with the, the crimes. It's, it has been a challenging environment. Senator Lee's been there through several administrations. I think it's safe to say he's never seen anything quite like this. But he will just keep doing what he can to keep the Trump administration honest and do what he can as an appropriator to make sure the money goes where it needs to go. I just wanted to make one comment and pass it on from my son, who's over here, 11 years old, to you and Leahy on the way here. Uh, I was trying to explain to him why we're, he, wherever, why we're coming here. He said, because children are in jail. And he thought about it like what, 20 minutes or something? <laughs> and then he gave me, he said, like, Mom, Mom, why are kids in jail? And I'm like, I don't know, you know? And why, like, what are we gonna say to the rest of the world, to the planet? Like, why are we letting this happen? It's inhumane, the laws is gonna keep pushing back against us, and hopefully the appropriations will all make a difference. 
I don't think anybody's going to be satisfied no matter how awesome he is on different issues until it's done. So well, it's a long slog, but we will not uh, stop with what he's doing. It's right. So I, we, we need it to be a shorter slog. Yeah, we need him to really fight slide. for it. Really well, fight really for is, it. He yeah. is and he has been. I'm telling you, again, like in 2013, he passed comprehensive immigration reform for the U.S. Senate. He did it. Sometimes the it's the truth. good guys that have to just keep moving it along. And he will. And he has. I mean, he will. That's, you know, he's a servant leader. He just tries to get stuff done and make it better for others. And that's been his whole career, and that's what he's going to continue to do. That's why I work for him. Are there any other questions? I want to give you these sheets about what is and isn't in the bill, just... All right, and we're going to sign this letter to send to the Thank you. 